All right, so now let's go back to the question. What is the relationship between the amount of money earned and the number of hours worked in this example? Well, I see that the two quantities are proportional because when every hour is added, another $8 is added to their pay. I know that there's an easier way to do that instead of adding $8, you know, five times and six times, and we call that, you guessed it, multiplication. Okay, so I see that if I multiply every um, set of hours worked by my $8 hourly rate, then I will get the values in the Y column for how much money I make. Okay, and so we know that multiplication makes that easier to fill out the rest of our table, so I hope we noticed that. And then we can also look and see that as these hours increase, right, in the amount of time that we're working, then the pay is also increasing at the exact same rate. So it's not like all of a sudden I work two hours and instead of $16 I get paid $10, or if I work five hours, I don't get paid $47, right? It is staying at the same constant rate. So if we think ahead to further lessons, if these quantities in the table were graphed, would the point zero, zero be on that graph? Let me say that again. If I put zero, zero in our table, let me go ahead and just put it up here where it would go, right? Instead of one hour's work, let's go backwards to zero hours. What would that mean in the context of this problem? Well, I know that for zero hours worked, it is telling me that I get paid zero dollars. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. If I don't work any hours, I'm not going to get paid no matter how much I would like it. So we want to keep that in mind when we start looking at graphs because this point here, zero, zero, is going to be very important. All right, let's think about one more question. How can multiplication and division be used to show the earnings are proportional to the number of hours worked? Well, we use multiplication here when we determined that the pay would be the hours times eight, right? So this was X and this was Y. So in order to get those Y values, we multiplied every single X by eight. And so I know that the, I'm showing multiplication here secretly in between the 8 and the X. And so that's my rule, right? I use multiplication to get those Y values. Okay, now how could I use division? Well, let's say I didn't know that the number was being multiplied by 8 every single time. Well, then I could then divide these numbers to then figure out what the number was that I was multiplying by. So let me show you an example. If I already had 6 and 48 there for me, and I didn't know how much money I uh, earned each hour, then I could divide the $48 I get paid, right? So the money I get paid to figure out the number of hours I worked. So I worked six hours and I made $48. So if I divide that, I know six goes into 48 eight times. So therefore, I make $8 in one hour, right? Remembering our labels. So I can use both multiplication to figure out our Y values here, like we did to fill out the table. I can also use division to double check and determine what that constant multiplier is in case they don't give me one. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and do some more practice.